new technologies disrupt old ones and new music replaces old music new fashions replace old fashions and new jobs replace old jobs it's a tale as old as time in the last decade we've witnessed an incredible transformation take place driven by the so-called gig economy old business modes were abandoned in favor of a freelance operator model airbnb and Uber are two of the most famous examples of this, but there are myriad others across all industries. All of these disruptive industries are built upon one central concept, that the old, heavily regulated methods of doing business just get in the way, and that by dodging inconvenient things like regulations, it's possible for ordinary people to work in industries they'd previously have no access to. Influencers are a core element of this disruption. They have turned the traditional media business on its head, thrown away the rules that journalists used to live and die by, and created an entirely new mode of operation. We've discovered, however, that when the cost of entry is zero, when accountability is limited, and when there is no code of conduct, things can and do go to shit. Well, the influencers have had a decent run, let's face it. They were birthed from the bastard foundries of the social media sites about 15 years ago, and they haven't looked back since. Being an influencer is now an alternative career path for someone who might previously have done a media studies course at a regional college in the mistaken belief that it was a way of getting on TV and being famous and shit. Being an influencer is a job that many people aspire to, but one in which few truly break through. Walk around your high street electrical store these days and alongside the big TVs and air fryers, you'll find USB desk microphones, boom stands and LED light rings. Your postman's got a popular TikTok channel. Your personal instructor is killing it on YouTube. And your Auntie Doris has a very niche channel on OnlyFans. It's the egalitarian dream, isn't it? Anyone who wants to can make a channel on any of the popular social media and streaming services and broadcast to their heart's content. If what they're saying resonates with an audience, then they're off and running and fuck the doubters. While universal access to the new internet-based mediums of the 21st century is a great thing, there are some pretty serious downsides to that access too. Not the least of which is that in many cases, the person behind the smartphone or camera doesn't have a fucking clue what they're talking about. If the last 15 years of social media and streaming content is remembered for anything, it will surely be the stunning proof of the Dunning-Kruger effect. Lack of knowledge and skills in a specific area causes people to greatly overestimate their own competence. You'll find endless examples of that on social media, but for some reason, it seems to be much worse on TikTok than any of the others. Side note, there are also myriad examples of people learning new skills and documenting the process, but that is entirely different because they accept that they have no skills and actually that journey towards competence is the entire point. The flip side to the universal access to social media and streaming services is when an individual outright lies on behalf of a brand. I'm an old school journalist. I have a degree in English and journalism from a decent British college and I did my thesis in investigative journalism. I was a technology and games journalist on British magazines for 15 years. And I've worked as a freelancer, staff writer, features editor and editor on national newsstand magazines and national newspapers. As a result of all that, I abide by a kind of code of conduct 
with honesty at its core. I believe that my loyalty lies with you guys, the folks choosing to view my content, not the various brands who'd like to market their goods and services to you. I'm far from a big enough deal to warrant the kind of attention that results in things like free drones arriving unsolicited from Shenzhen. But I've been in this game for long enough to know that such freebies come with a hidden price. The temptation when you are sent something for free is to go easy on the company. The main reason for this is so that they will continue to send you free stuff. After all, why would a company invest their marketing dollars in a content producer that was always slagging their products off? Knowing that you could be cut off from the source of the content you're producing on your channel is a huge disincentive to being completely transparent. Now, some people have praised my frankness and honesty on this channel, but being as honest as I am is actually a big risk. It means I'm always going to be on the outside looking in. Typically speaking, only the guys playing the brand game get invited into the cosy inner circle. Even the big league content producers, the guys getting hundreds of thousands of views on their posts, will be cognizant of this. It's one of the reasons why it's so hard to find truly honest opinions on this platform and others like it. This is the subtle manifestation of influencer marketing logistics. If they're not simply lying to you, then they're smoothing the edges off just enough to tip your purchasing decisions in their direction. Then, of course, there are the cases where someone is simply a shill for a company, a willing participant in fraud. They straight up lie or conflate the quality of a product because they're being paid to do so. It's this last type of bad influencer behavior, which is leading to a big crackdown that many would say is long overdue. Leading the charge is France, where they've taken time out from burning their cities to the ground to finalize legislation that will regulate the commercial activities of influencers and protect consumers from possible fraud or scams. It forces influencers to state whether they have been paid to promote a product or service, if images have been retouched or, and this is a timely one, if a person's figure or face have been created with the help of artificial intelligence. The French ain't dicking about either. If a person breaks these rules, they could face up to two years in prison a 300,000 euro fine and be banned from carrying out commercial activities on social media. In an accompanying statement to the new bill, the legislators state that the law will exist to stop the promotion of things like fake cancer drugs and cosmetic products that cause hair loss or damage to the body. If you search for money-making ideas right here on YouTube, you find a thousand videos promoting drop shipping as some easy route to wealth. The French law will be directly targeting some of this because they say it's the promotion of products sold for several tens of euros, which actually cost just a few cents. They're also going after abusive personal training accounts, subscriptions to phony sports forecasts, and products bought and paid for, which are never delivered. Zut alors! It will surely only be a matter of time before there is some official edict from the European Parliament on these matters. And I'd be very surprised if countries such as the UK, Canada and Australia didn't follow suit. In fact, here in Australia, our Consumer Affairs Department of Government are currently actively investigating several hundred social media influencers for exactly the kind of blatant fraud the French are legislating against. The Irish, the US, the UK, India, even China are all looking long and hard at these shady practices of many influencers who never disclose the fact that they're being paid to talk about certain products and services or who outright lie about products for financial gain. The problem is a lot of the dodgy practices of people with channels is that some stuff falls into a kind of grey area. YouTube are pretty specific about your obligations when you upload a video here and you're supposed to explicitly state whether you've been paid to produce the video. Most people seem to do the right thing, 
Hence the myriad. This video was sponsored by Squarespace slash Epidemic Sound slash Grammarly slash NordVPN. But many do not. One of the reasons why there's a relatively light number of reviews on this channel of mine is that for the most part, I prefer to purchase the products. I'm then free to speak honestly about them. That said, if an app has a 30 day free trial period, then that's ideal because I can spend some time with it, assess its strengths and weaknesses with no feelings of obligation towards the company that makes it. I like to think that my review of the Arsenal 2 Pro and its follow-up video would be just as honest if they'd sent me one to review, but I may have gone a tiny bit easier on them. Who am I kidding? That thing's a piece of shit and I'd never have gone easy on it. It's worth pointing out that there is a definite difference between influencers and content creators. As far as I'm concerned, most content creators, people like me hustling on platforms like this, are simply citizen journalists. Meanwhile, influencers are driven not by an interest in the subjects they cover in their online content, but simply by a desire to increase follower counts and to make as much money as they can in any way that they can. They're just self-interested, self-obsessed sellouts. If you join a platform like YouTube and your only aim is to get as many subs as possible, then you're chasing influencer status. If you think you have a unique message to bring to the world or a desire to talk about stuff that might not get a lot of coverage in the mainstream media, then you're a content creator. The problem for unscrupulous influencers is that platforms such as YouTube and Twitch are actually pretty mature now. They've gone through the growing pains and while all platforms have their flaws, the systems are pretty well refined these days. The late unpleasantness with the pandemic created a massive uptick in the number of people embracing online entertainment services and abandoning traditional broadcast or cable media. And while a global downturn caused in part by that same pandemic has also led to a lot of people cancelling those services, it's clear that the world has moved on. YouTube is every bit as viable these days as any broadcast network. In fact, if you take the generation gap into account, platforms like YouTube are the only game in town. My 21-year-old son has never sat down and watched traditional broadcast TV in his life. The increasing maturity of platforms like YouTube has meant that the rules and regulations are far more codified than they ever were. This means that time is also running out for bad influencers who are prepared to lie to their followers if there's a paycheck at the end of it. The frontier Wild West days are long gone on platforms like YouTube. The situation is somewhat different on TikTok thanks to its Chinese ownership, but the authorities are certainly keeping an eye on the output. Whenever you view review content on services like YouTube, you need to bear in mind that you're probably not getting the full picture. Unless the creator has purchased the product themselves, they're unlikely to be too critical of it. Shell products pimped by bad influencers are easy to spot when you've been kicking around the internet for a while. But for the older generations, it's a different matter. For this reason, it's good to see the authorities start the process of identifying and punishing the narcissistic con artists operating on online platforms. But it's a cutthroat business, and for every one of them that's caught, another 100 will be ready to step into the breach. For my part, I'll continue to be as transparent as possible and to identify the flaws and weaknesses in any product or service I review on this channel while celebrating the good stuff. That being said and done, if anyone's interested, I have some tickets to a promising new event called the Fire Festival and a small quantity of totally legit Chanel purses. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.